Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my December 2021 book haul, otherwise known as my greedy Gus gets everything she asked for book haul, <laughs> because all of these were holiday gifts from my family. I emailed them a lot of links of uh, books that basically fit the description of uh, what I intend to read next year because uh, they're at the top of my Goodreads TBR. And one of my resolutions is to read everything I put on Goodreads uh, from January 2017 to uh, June 2018. And so I gave them a list of 10 books, including links to used uh, book uh, sites for them, for Abe books. Just because I thought, you know, if I can, I don't need pristine books. It makes it easier to get rid of them, even if they're, you know, not in pristine condition. And I know that my family didn't spend a whole lot of money on them. But I still put in my email, like, I don't intend to, don't in, for you to get all of these books for me. I'm just saying, here's some options if you want to pick and choose. But <laughs> they ended up giving me all 10. So there's that, and that's not even all the books uh, they gave me. They gave me a couple of others, but uh, I decided I have enough to show you just with these uh, 10 books that um, I will be reading throughout 2022, definitely. And I will save uh, the other books I got over the holidays for a January book haul. <laughs> so without further ado, I will quickly go through these 10 books. Uh, they're all books that I found through the Jewish Book Council website. Uh, and I have uh, vague uh, to not so vague memories of what exactly uh, they're about, but uh, I intend to give them all a shot. Starting with City of the Sun, which uh, if you cannot tell, uh, will be taking place in Egypt. So uh, uh, the blurb on uh, the top by Reza Aslan says, uh, a fascinating insight into the events that helped shape the forces at play in Egypt and the Middle East today. This book couldn't be more timely. I believe it was published around 2014, and things are probably somewhat at least in the same vein having to do with this, so I'm excited to give it a go. This next book is The Reluctant Daughter by Leslie Newman. Pretty sure I've read some of her short stories in college or that sort of thing. Uh, and so I was curious when I uh, saw her novel being uh, publicized. Uh, assuming that uh, it has something to do with perhaps Russian ancestry, given uh, the cover with the, the uh, toppling Russian doll. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Whoop, and I lied before. There is one non-Jewish, non-Jewish book council book on this list. This is The Loved Ones by Sonia Chung, which I probably heard about through uh, book riots or podcasts or what have you, you know, five years ago. <laughs> so I will read from the flap. In this masterful novel of inheritance and loss, Sonia Chung proves herself a worthy heir to Marguerite Duras, Wang Sun Wan, and James Salter. Spanning generations and divergent cultures, The Loved Ones maps the intimate politics of unlikely attractions, illicit love, and costly reconciliations. Charles Lee, the young African-American patriarch of a biracial family, seeks to remedy his fatherless childhood in Washington, D.C., by making an honorable choice when his chance arrives. Years later, in the mid-1980s, uneasy and stymied in his marriage to Alice, he finds a connection with Hannah Lee, the teenage Korean-American caregiver whose parents' transgressive flight from tradition and war has left them shrouded in a cloud of secrets and muted passion. A shocking and senseless death will test every familial bond and force all those who were touched by the tragedy to re-examine who their loved ones truly are and the very meaning of the words. Haunting, elliptical, and powerful, the loved ones deconstructs the world we think we know and shows us the one we inhabit. So I, there's a lot of uh, things that uh, stick out to me here, including, you know, intercultural, uh, intergenerational, and it takes place in uh, D.C., which uh, I live right outside of. So, yeah, I think this one will be a lot of fun. Next, I have Your Mouth is Lovely by Nancy Richler, which I also don't remember a lot of, but uh, instead of reading the flap summary, maybe I'll go with a blurb on the back of this book. This is by Kaylee Jones, author of A Soldier's Daughter Never Cries and Celeste Descending. Your Mouth is Lovely is a brilliant novel that bursts off the page with characters so alive I can still hear their voices and see their faces. Nancy Richler succeeds in creating a microcosm of Jewish life in Russia at the start of the 20th century, 
while also evoking the macrocosm of Russian history at the dawn of the communist revolution. Turbulent and horrific, but also filled with hope and passion. Life in Siberian exile has not been so well portrayed since Varlam Shalomov's Kolima Tales, while Richler's villagers, with all their terror of change, their close-mindedness and superstitions evoke the earlier stories of Isaac Babel, a novel to be treasured. So I will uh, latch on my hope to this high praise. Next we have The Fallback Plan by Lee Stein with a blurb right at the bottom by Gary Steingart, who I think is relatively well known in literary uh, circles. It says, beautiful, funny, thrilling, and true, which uh, is uh, short but sweet, <laughs> kind of like this book. <laughs> Continuing with Russian influence, I believe, is Vaklav and Lena by Haley Tanner. And uh, one of the uh, blurbs from the back is by Elizabeth Strout, who I really like. It says, in this charming and wonderfully engaging tale, the reader is swept into the beautifully rendered landscape of the immigrant childhood and experience. Haley Tanner has created a world peopled with characters of great poignancy, and they will linger in the mind and heart long after the book is put down. Again, high praise, but for me, by a very trustworthy source. Then this a little bit heftier novel is Sister of Mine by Sabrawald Fogel, which what I remember of this is it's about uh, Jews and African Americans around the Civil War. So uh, this is, uh, I think, a lot um, untapped uh, ground, I think, in fiction when it comes to at least uh, Jewish American fiction. Uh, it could be a bit challenging, in fact, uh, because uh, there were certainly Jews in the South who brought it, bought into Southern mythos. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to see how this one goes. This next one is The Wayward Moon by Janice Wiseman, which is uh, the most historical of my historical fiction. This is biblical fiction, I believe, especially going by this blurb by Maggie Anton from the back. Wiseman brings 9th century Babylonia to life so vividly that she can almost smell the jasmine and taste the date cakes. So I gotta love all of those, uh, you know, transcendent details of, you know, the physicality of uh, being alive and what uh, fiction can evoke uh, when it's done well, so let's hope this lives up. This next cover evokes a sci-fi sort of feel, I think, with the floating house for On Bittersweet Place by Rona Weinberg, which, uh, going with a major theme of uh, these books, also has to do with Russian Jewish immigrants around uh, the October Revolution, you know, and so I'll just read the summary on the back. On Bittersweet Place is the powerful coming-of-age story of Lena Sernitsky, a young Russian Jew whose family flees their homeland in the Ukraine after the October Revolution. The story unfolds in Chicago during the Jazz Age of the 1920s, where Lena's impoverished family has settled and where she must traverse the early years of adolescence. Lena's new world is large and beautiful and full of promise, but it also is cold and unwelcoming and laden with danger. Rona Weinberg delivers a moving, universal story of family, self-discovery, young love, and the always relevant experience of the immigrant, the refugee, the outsider struggling to create a new home, and a better life in an unfamiliar place. So yeah, I obviously have a type, but uh, I have high hopes for my type, and uh, hopefully this one will live up. And the final book of this haul, which I added to my Goodreads TBR on January 1st, 2018, is Even in Darkness by Barbara Stark Neiman. And this one uh, delves into Holocaust fiction. Uh, from the back it reads, Based on a true story spanning a century and three continents, Even in Darkness traces the life of Claire Kohler, who meets the Nazis' destruction of her comfortable world with passionate resilience, enlisting good-hearted everyday Germans to help her survive. This saga of family, a lover, two world wars, and a concentration camp leads to the unconventional life Claire builds up in post-war Germany, one that ultimately allows her to find wisdom, meaning, and most unexpectedly, love. So yeah, uh, I don't think I've read Jewish uh, Holocaust fiction uh, that takes place in part uh, in post-war Germany, or at least where they stay there for long, so uh, this could be very intriguing on that front. I, I love stories that span <laughs> these uh, long time periods because, you know, you get in so much history and how it affects people, but of course the downside is you have to really uh, 
put a lot of work into your characters so that they don't feel uh, thin because you're spending too much time on, uh, you know, the plot or the world building or, you know, there's just too many characters and you don't get them all as well as you should. But um, we're going to be team optimism here. That's why we pick up any novel, right? You know, there's always a chance that uh, you won't like it, but uh, there's also a chance that uh, the writer really brings their all to the project. So, yeah. And that about covers it for me now. I will leave the Goodreads links for all of these books listed down below. And then throughout 2022, my plan is you will hear me talk about reading all of them. <laughs> so huzzah! I feel very good about, you know, asking for these particular books, the ones I know that I'm going to read soon. Or at least I've done so well so far in uh, sticking to my Goodreads goal of, you know, getting uh, those off the list at the top of the list. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, hopefully a fun, exciting year of reading ahead. I will be back on this channel, though, to talk about my final AM reading of 2021. The final books I will be reading and discussing. Uh, <laughs> because I'm not done with my reading yet this year. You know, we still got a couple good days left in uh, the uh, year. So stay tuned for... Uh, how I wrap things up there. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching everyone. Hope everyone who celebrated had a very Merry Christmas this weekend, and I'll see you next time.